Well, good evening. I want to thank Liz for that uh, very kind uh, introduction. And I want to thank all of you again for being here today here in New York. I want to welcome you to the Empire State uh, here in New York City. For those uh, that maybe didn't hear me speak this morning uh, briefly, uh, so as Liz said, I'm the Senate Republican leader. I'm a state senator here in New York. Now, my district is, uh, is in western New York, up uh, in the Niagara Falls, Buffalo region. Uh, so if there's any Bills fans out there. But, um, but more importantly, um, you know, New York is a big state. And a lot of times where I live, we probably have as much in common with the people of Pennsylvania or Ohio or even Ontario as we might to somebody from Staten Island or Manhattan. But yet, in my role as Senate Minority Leader, I represent all of our conference. We have uh, Republican senators from New York City, the Adirondacks, Long Island, the Hudson Valley, and everywhere in between. And it's a real privilege for me to be invited here. This, I want to thank everyone uh, who put this event on. I want to thank all the dignitaries who came. As Liz mentioned, um, so I'm a 9-11 kid. Uh, I was just out of college, and I watched 9-11 happen on my couch. And at 22 years old, it was the first time in my life that I knew exactly what I had to do, and I enlisted in the U.S. Army as a result of the attacks on 9-11. And I felt very fortunate to be able to do something about that heinous event that I watched. A lot of times in life we see stuff, we see terrible things, and we don't always know what to do. We don't, we're not always in a position to respond. I was in a perfect position to take action. That's what I did, and I was very proud to deploy to Afghanistan in 2008. And then, as Liz mentioned, I had the opportunity in my role as a state senator and as the Senate Minority Leader to travel to Israel last summer, about two months, it was August of 23, about two months before the attacks of October 7th, I was at one of the kibbutzes on the Gaza border that was attacked on that fateful day. I was at the Syrian border. We were at the Lebanese border uh, looking at the Hezbollah lookouts. We went into the West Bank and met with the Palestinian Authority's spokesperson. It was a we were in Jerusalem, we were in Tel Aviv. It was an unbelievable, spiritually defining trip for me. But it also crystallized an important thing for me. So we, the trip started at Yad Vashem, which is the Holocaust Museum in Israel, and it is from a very uniquely Israeli perspective. You go to the one in Washington, D.C., it's very much from an ally perspective, from the United States perspective, from the soldiers liberating the camps. But when you go to Yad Vashem, it is very much from the Israeli perspective. And for anyone that has never been, I encourage you strongly to go. And then our trip ended, everything in between, at Masada, which is also an incredible, uh, a place that I never even heard of. And it was just an incredible, um, uh, the history there, that was where the Romans ultimately uh, crushed the zealots, the, the, the Jewish zealots that held out for a very long time. Um, and really that was the end of the Jews having a, a place to call home. And the lesson was that without a place to call home, without a homeland that was theirs, we know what happened. Because beyond a lot of other things in World War II, the takeaway at Yad Vashem was, yeah, Germany deserves plenty of responsibility for what occurred, but many nations in Europe turned their Jews over to the Nazis. They handed people over to their fates. Nobody was there to defend God's people. And so how could the nation of Israel come to any other conclusion but that we will never not have a homeland again. We will never not have a sanctuary for Jews again because we know what happens when we don't. And right now, they are fighting an enemy. And I said this this morning, Hamas is not, you couldn't find a lot of dissimilarities between Hamas and Al-Qaeda. The same people who killed 3,000 folks on 9-11-2001, they have 
very similar worldviews as Hamas and the folks who attacked Israel on October 7th. They, no doubt, celebrated the attack on 9-11. We have to see that in America, our fate walks hand in hand with Israel's fate. That Israel's security is hand in hand with our security. And our word has to mean something. You know, after the, 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 the retreat, I call it the retreat from Afghanistan, I said during an interview that there would be repercussions globally of what the world was seeing in Afghanistan and the United States, what I would turn, there's a way, by the way, to leave a country that you've been in for 20 years, and that was not it. That was not it. Doesn't mean you have to stay there forever, but there's a way to break contact, there's a way to leave that does honor and dignity to the people who gave their lives because we sent them over there, and that was not it. And I said that would have repercussions for the United States across the globe. And since then, just take a look at what's going on in the world. Don't tell me that there's not a direct correlation to our actions abroad in the last four years and what we're seeing happen today. I know this is a prayer breakfast, and we talked about this morning about prayer and the importance of prayer, and I believe that. I believe, I believe that we need to be praying more than ever for Israel and for the United States and for our world. But I think when we leave here, after those prayers, I am also hopeful that there will be action. Right? We have to, t- the, the Lord says, you know, charity begins at, it begins at home. Right? He takes care of those who take. He, he calls on us. You're all here. He has given you talents and skills and abilities and, and resources that other people don't have. And he expects you to pray and to put your faith in him. But then he also expects you to move out and to do his work. And his work calls on us to be involved, to defend Jerusalem to defend the nation of Israel, to defend the Jewish people, not only in Israel, but here in New York, here in America. You know, I talked about being in the military, and I'll close with the idea that, to me, we are all enlisted in the army of God, Christians and Jews alike. And some people serve in the military in peacetime, and some people serve in times of war. My brothers and sisters, we are in the army of God in an increasingly dangerous time. But we must not lose sight of that. And we must take the appropriate action. We must steel ourselves for the days and the weeks and the months and the years ahead. We must focus on leaders who understand that. There's an old adage that a lot of times generals fight the last war. I think that happens with politicians too. I think sometimes politicians, they're, they're out of place from where we are. Where we are today is not where we were 20 years ago. There's people that have been in Washington, that have been in Albany for so long, they just don't get it any longer. They, they're, they're running the old playbook. The world has shifted. The stakes are higher. And we need leaders who speak truth to power and who are there to do your work and to do God's work. And I would ask you to remember that when you go to the polls here in New York or anywhere across the United States this November. God bless all of you for the work you're doing. God bless the United States, and God bless the nation of Israel. Thank you. Rob, thank you so much. Senator, a great pleasure. Thank you for coming. Thank you for welcoming us here in your state and feeling us so welcome. God bless you.